Select the missing starting material required to accomplish the following transformation. So if we look at the starting material that we are given, we see that we have an alpha beta unsaturated ketone. And we appear to have a base. So we have methoxide as a base. And we have methanol as the solvent and the conjugate acid of that base. So that means this could be a solvent in the reaction, or if we needed a proton source, then it could also function that way. So we're gonna take a look at what's changed between this alpha beta unsaturated ketone and the product that we're given. And so what we should notice, let me draw the alpha and beta on here, is that we have substituted at the beta carbon. Um, so we've got a new bond right here. And so what we have seen is for a nucleophile to add to the beta carbon of an alpha beta unsaturated system, that the nucleophile should be a relatively stable nucleophile, a weaker nucleophile. Um, so it looks like we're dealing with something that's in between uh, a negative charge in between two carbonyls, and so that would be a, a resonant stabilized enolate, and so we could expect it to add to the beta carbon. So we just want to take a look and see what it is that we have. So if we want to determine what nucleophile we needed, we just need to look at this piece. So we need um, between those two carbonyls to have a negative charge. And then we're just going to see what's attached to the carbonyl. So on one side, we see that we have a ketone. So recognizing that the end of this um, chain is a carbon. So it is a CH3 group. Um, and then we have an ester on the other side. And so this would form if you started with the neutral compound and treated it with the base. So this definitely would come from this neutral compound. Um, so that is, if we take a quick look at the bottom here, that's our option D. Um, but let's go ahead and draw the mechanism here. And there's a few other points to make. So notice that we have an ester. And so notice that this OCH3 of this ester functional group, um, so the whole thing overall is an ester, but specifically this OCH3, notice that it matches the base. So the base is matched to the ester. And this is something that we're going to commonly see as we do reactions with esters that involve needing to treat them with a base. So by matching the base to the ester, it means that even if this base does a nucleophilic acyl substitution, you will still end up with the same ester. So if we had a different base, you could have a transesterification reaction, as we saw in a previous chapter. So we're matching the base to the ester to prevent the transesterification reaction from giving you something different. Okay, so if you've got that as your starting material, so we've, we've decided that this is our starting material. Um, so let me go ahead and draw it in again here. So the first thing that's gonna happen is your base, that OCH3 minus will react to deprotonate. And so the most acidic protons, of course, are the ones in between the carbonyl because you're going to have a lot of resonance stabilization. And so that is going to give you this enolate that we said we needed to add to that beta carbon. So that's going to form the enolate. So there is the enolate. And so being that softer nucleophile, because it's resonance stabilized, it's going to react at the beta carbon rather than the carbonyl carbon. So you can see this add to the beta carbon. That's going to push the electrons in here to move the double bond. And then we are going to push these pi electrons, the carbonyl, onto the oxygen. And so we can take a look at what this has formed. So we've got the oxygen with the negative charge. a pi bond here. We've got a new bond between this resonance stabilized enolate carbon and the beta carbon. So we can draw that in. And 
So we have attached this enolate to the molecule we started with. So. so this is almost the product that you have here. You've got this solvent that has an acidic hydrogen, or slightly acidic hydrogen, so it can at least provide a hydrogen to protonate here. And so it's gonna protonate at that alpha position. So what's going to happen is that these electrons are going to come back down to form the carbonyl. And we're going to push this pi bond out here to grab the oxygen. And that's going to lead you to the product that we have shown below.